good morning good morning today uh, some of our students will present some topics so first tahmina will be presenting solar spectra so i would like to invite tahmina please carry on tahmina you can continue so today i'm going to explain uh, talk about the topic of um, solar spectra so before starting the topic we need to know what is solar spectrum so the solar spectrum consists of a continuum with thousands of dark, uh, dark absorption lines su superposed or occurs at same time now here why why, uh, why it say dark absorption lines it is because absorption lines are seen as dark lines or lines of reduced intensity on a continuous spe uh, spectrum and these lines are produced primarily in the photosphere an outer shell a shell of the sun from which light is radiated so on the next slide we are going to talk about sun so i have pointed out oh i have noted down some points first point is sun is the solar spectrum or the white line which it emits second point it represents that the photosphere composed of condensed matter condensed matter means the solid and liquid phases which arises from the attraction between the atoms in the so photosphere there are presence of some uh, some gases so in there's solid and liquid phase uh, liquid phases at attract with, uh, between them the atoms or molecules in the third uh, point sunlight is a portion of the electromagnetic radiation G uh, uh, given by the sun in particular infrared G uh, in particular infrared visible and ultraviolet light so electromagnetic radiation means in here electromagnetic radiation means the uh, it it's a kind of radiation in, uh, in in radiation in which electric and magnetic fields arise simultaneously so the sunlight which is given off by the sun it's a uh, is a portion of the electromagnetic radiation um which in in particular visible and ultraviolet lights on earth sunlight is scattered and filtered through other atmosphere and is obvious and is obvious as daylight when the sun is above the horizon in this light you in here the uh, solid line the which is the black line in here is the solar spectrum the total line that the sun emits is represented by the area under the curve under the curve importantly the spectrum of the sun is apparently closely matches that of the black bodies on the earth here there is a this one is a solar spectrum and here it is ideal black body ideal black body means a surface that absorbs all radiant energy falling on it the time uh, no the time arises because incident vi visible light will be absorbed rather than reflected and therefore the surface will appear black 
So whatever radiant energy falls on it, it absorbs all the radiant energy. Here, the main difference is in the short wavelength region in the visible region where the atmosphere absorbs and scatters a lot of radi radiation. If you see clearly in the black curve due to the uh, um, in, in the in the figure, you can see there are further dips in the in the in the red curves due to the it is because due to the absorption by the atmosphere. So the uh, the spectrum of the sun is apparently closely matched that of the spectrum of the black bodies on the earth. Next point is is as sunlight enters the Earth's atmosphere, some is absorbed, some is scattered, and some passes through unaffected by the molecules in the atmosphere and is either absorbed or reflected by objects at ground level. Next point. Different molecules do different things. Ozone absorbs a significant amount of radiation in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum, while water vapor and carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide absorbed primarily in the visible and infrared parts of the spectrum. These absor absorption lines are shown in the figure. Here at the upper, at the upper electromagnetic, uh, at the upper electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelengths are shown. We give different sections of the electromagnetic spectrum's names to help us remember the wavelengths and the frequencies which are present in those regions. Not that the, not that the wavelength and the frequency change with the type of light. So here the spin frequency uh, into wavelength is equal to sp speed of light where frequency is the unit of frequency is expressed in hertz or a second and the unit of the wavelength is uh, can be expressed in meters the solar spectrum manifests how much light is emitted by the star at each wavelength since the solar spectrum is continuous with this particular shape we see that the sun is emitting white line Optically, white line is a mixture of lines with different wavelengths. If the prism is held up to the sunlight, it is seen that the light break up into its component colors um, like rainbows, which we can see by our own eyes. Uh, well, we, uh, in here, not that. Gamma rays and X rays are not considered as a part of solar spectrum. Only at the left force are ultraviolet visible. Are part of solar spectrum. Ultraviolet is not visible. Uh, ultraviolet visible infrared or uh, solar spectrum. Yeah. So in the next slide, we will note the uh, not some points for the solar spectrum. First, ozone and oxygen oxygen absorb much of the UV irradiance below 300 nanometer high in the atmosphere. Second. Above 70% of the visible irradiance makes it all the way to sea level. Third, ozone absorbs a little of the visible irradiance. Fourth, a significant fraction of the visible irradiance is scattered by clouds and aerosol. Some is reflected back out into space so that this portion never deposits energy in the Earth system. Fifth, there are large wavelength bands in which water vapor, carbon dioxide, and oxygen absorb infrared radiance. Finished. Thank you, Tahmina. You did well, and you have made a PowerPoint. You have researched deep into it. Thank you very much. Who is the next person? Sumeya. 
next ritu will be speaking about lens and the action of lens so let us see her presentation yes ritu you can start okay assalam alaikum teacher and my dear friends uh, here i am ritu now i am going to give you a presentation on lens and action of lens first of all i will start with what lens is lens is a transparent medium bounded by two surfaces one of them is spherical and other is either spherical or plane um lenses are made from materials such as glass or plastic and polished to a desired shape we know spherical lenses are of two types convex lens or converging uh, sorry yeah converging lens and the other one is concave lens or diverging lens so first i will start with convex lens mm yeah uh, convex lens convex lens is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges and also we know in convex lens light rays form a point object in a such a way that after refraction all the rays converge at a single point since the convex lens converts all the light rays at a single point so we call also call it a uh, call it as a converging lens in convex lens rays of light travel uh, traveling parallel to its principal axis There are many example of convex lens like rear sight mirrors of vehicles optical instruments etc so there are so now depending on the shape of the surface every type of lens again divided into three categories such as in convex lens uh, there are uh, three types of convex lens first one is Uh, reconnecting okay so in convex lens first one is um, double convex or diverging or biconvex lens so the uh, first one in biconvex lens the surface are convex and in number 2 planar convex lens so in planar convex lens one surface is plane and other surface is convex and third one is concave convex lens here one surface is convex and the other surface is concave so um, now i will talk about con uh, concave lens here yeah. concave lens is thinner at middle and thicker at edge concave lens diverge all the edges so we call it uh, as a diverging lens it is spreads out light rays that have been refracted through it concave lens used as correct short sighted like myopia there are many example of concave lenses in real life application like binoculars or in telescope eye glass to correct near sightedness cameras flash flashlight lasers etc Mm, you know, it is uh, yeah. Concave lens is used as spy hole in doors in optical instruments, etc. Uh, another thing, uh, in convex lens, the two spherical surface are curved inwards, and in concave lens, the two spherical surface are uh, curved outwards. A picture now. so we have discussed about what lens is also its various types now finally i am going to talk about um, discuss about action of a lens so action of a lens means how the rays of light will be diverted when it will pass through the lens yeah we know that when a ray of light is incident on a prism it is diverted and bends towards the base Mm, if it is a con in case of convex lens all rays which are parallel to the principal axis will converge to the principal focus 
and um, and in concave lens then uh, the all all the rays which are parallel to the principal axis will diverge from the principal focus teacher that's up to this hello teacher teacher you are muted That was a good one. Uh, you made a good presentation, but sorry, I could not uh, share it properly. I think you are talking and the presentation did not go in line, right? But uh, I think we all have seen the um, screen shares and is it clear to you the concept which she discussed? I'm asking everyone. Is, yes, is it, teacher, it's clear. Okay, so let us hand over now the platform to. Okay, teacher. Irfan. Irfan, right? Yes. Yeah, teacher, it's my turn. Good morning, teacher. Good morning. How are you, teacher? I'm Where good. is Abdul? Abdul. Uh, doesn't matter. It's me only. Irfan, so you changed your t-shirt today? <laughs> teacher uh, i'm gonna start with the important terms related to the lenses okay right, my topic is given point. important terms related to the lenses okay so i'll start with the center of the curvature uh, we know the center of the spherical surface for which the lens is formed are called the center of the curvature it means see here are two figures c1 and c2 are the uh, center of the curvature and middle one, there is the lens. And for concave lens, here C1 and C2 is the uh, center of the curvature. So I hope you get it because it's very easy topic. And uh, second, it comes the principal axis, the line passing through the two centers of curvature and extended on the both side is called principal axis. And I also gave the name X and X dash. The line starting from X to X dash is the principal axis for also the concave lens, the starting from X to X dash is the principal axis. And this is the midpoint. And it also uh, bisect the C1 and C2. It means it, it bisects the center of curvature. So, and after it, I would like to say radius of the curvature, the radius of the sphere of uh, which the lens surfaces are formed are called the Radii of the curvature. Radii means from here, from uh, from from the the uh, radius of the curvature of each plane about uh, optical center. The geometrical center of the lenses is called the optical center. So here is the convex lens. Here is the convex lens. So from here to here. The midpoint is the optical center, and for concave lens, starting from here to here, it is the optical center, and it is between the C, uh, the center of curvature C1 and C2. See he, here, you can see C1 and C2, and after it comes the aperture. Aperture is not different, but it's slightly same, but it converges. For example, the part of the lenses from which refraction takes place is called the aperture. So I, I drew the different diagram for our aperture C. The, uh, here it says the part from which the refraction takes place. So from here, the refraction takes place from this side, from this side of lens. So the aperture for the concave lens is from here. And the, the, the aperture for the concave lens starts from here. So it is uh, the aperture for concave lens starts from this side. And from here is the mid, this side. So, and the, uh, the second last, it comes a principal focus, a point on the principal focus of the lens where all the light rays traveling parallel to uh, principal axis, it, uh, it travels through a parallel to the parallel axis, uh, principal axis, we learn the principal axis is the line from X to X inverse. So the, um, and uh, the principal focus means the line is traveling parallel to this line. And 
but it uh, but but it also converts and or appear to converge or appear to converge means it also uh, comes back see uh, it uh, the light travels from here to the uh, from this side to that side and the uh, and the light convert i think uh, uh, wait a second wait a second the light converges and changes its direction but the main thing for the principal focus is that the light appears i mean the rays traveling converges or appear to converge it means it comes sometime it comes backward uh, backward and the last and, uh, so we know the light converges and always for the uh, for the convex lens the light always bisect in the uh, in the midpoint see and it is called the principal focus for the convex lens it con it appears to converge and come backwards and makes a principal focus um, behind it behind the lens so then this is the principal focus and the focal length and this is the focal length is the diff, uh, the distance between the principal focus and the optical center so we learned that the optical center is this one so if the light converges here for example here the distance from this point the this point it will be the focal length for the con uh, con convex lens and for the convex lens it will be from here to the optical center so thank you i know it was a bullshit it was, it was your good. shit it was good irfan